the genetic code and the ribosomal machinery that makes these proteins, one thing we can rule out is evolution because all of that is required for evolution to begin. And, and this is not a, 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 a theist view. Every, all biologists understand, and, and Richard Dawkins has made it very clear uh, as well, that the, uh, the idea of abiogenesis cannot involve biological evolution as we know it. In other words, it cannot involve natural selection, the Darwinian type of evolution, because all of that accurate self-replication is a requirement for evolution to begin. That was Dr. Seigard, a Christian biochemist who recently appeared on a call-in show at the Capturing Christianity YouTube channel. Now, this is one of the largest Christian apologist YouTube channels, and they've never had their channel open up for call-in show type content before, and I haven't had the chance to interact with them before, but this week they were doing a fundraiser and they opened up all week to have call-ins with atheists. So I thought this was the perfect time to go on to Capturing Christianity. And Cy Gart is a biochemist. Um, he knows his biochemistry, and he's not a young earth creationist. He's an old earth creationist in that he accepts the reality of evolution, although it kind of seems like he rejects it for humans. I don't know. I need more clarification on that. But he rejects essentially that uh, abiogenesis could happen without a god and this he says that biology is indicative of the existence of god and that he came to god through his studying of science and biology and you guys know abiogenesis is one of my favorite topics to debate about so i just had to call in to this show and talk with sai so there were a ton of other callers we didn't really have that much time to discuss, but luckily I challenged Sai to a longer format uh, conversation and Sai accepted. So hopefully Sai and I will be having that discussion. He said that there are three main points in biological sciences that point him towards the existence of a god. So we just focused on the first one for this, for this discussion that you're about to see, um, the topic of abiogenesis. And as you saw with that clip at the beginning, Basically, Sai's argument comes down to the fact that you have this cellular machinery that was present in Luca, the last universal common ancestor, and he says that that machinery could not have evolved because it already requires the existence of the genetic code and the ribosome and this self-replicating machinery that needs to be in place for evolution to occur. And so I went on to dispute that, showing that you can actually have Darwinian-style evolution and natural selection without a genetic code, without a ribosome, just with these autocatalytic chemical systems, and I brought some papers supporting that. So enjoy this interaction, and hopefully you'll see a longer one with me and Cy in the future. Okay, so your name is Grayson, but base theory, what is this? Is this a YouTube channel? Uh, Yeah, that's my channel. I typically do debates or science communication type subject so i know that time is short for today but i would like to throw down the gauntlet a little bit for sai and challenge him to debate all three of these uh points because i think that i can provide peer-reviewed scientific literature disproving each of them so that's my challenge but i'll, I'll just focus on this first point i do think that i have a peer-reviewed published paper that directly since the title of this video is disprove this biochemist i think i can do that with a peer-reviewed publication here Nice. Okay. Yeah. Go, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. So if I'm understanding the, the key uh, argument here, the, the key uh, point that you're saying here is that evolution cannot explain the origin of things like the genetic code or ribosomes because evolution depends on those uh, mechanisms already being in place in order to act. And that's the point that I would have to disagree. And I think is just a false statement and i think that there is plenty of peer-reviewed literature that uh, showing this so if i could just cite which one i'm going to be talking about because there's a review article on this exact topic that was published in life uh, the, the journal in 2021 and it's literally the title is self reproduction and darwinian evolution in autocatalytic chemical reaction systems it's by sandeep amita et al so that's uh the publication i know i'm not obviously not going to go through the whole thing with you live but um, they do sort of break down Darwinian evolution into uh, requiring 
a few uh, prerequisites, and those are a self-replicating entity of some kind, um, and then heredity, variation in in fitness uh, effects. Right. If you have all those in place, then you're going to have Darwinian evolution and selection. Right. And they they do a literature review showing all the times that that has been shown experimentally in these autocatalytic chemical systems. So they show all of those processes in lipid-based systems, in peptide-based systems, and in RNA-based systems. And you also claimed that you don't get large molecules forming spontaneously. That has also been shown in amyloid chemistry, for example, to form spontaneously in the presence of volcanic gases, very long macromolecules, very stable, don't degrade in water, and have an element of heredity, um, being that they uh, self-reproduce following the same template of amino acid sequence. They they have this heredity. They have differential fitness effects because they have differential stabilities based on their amino acid sequence. All of these factors are in place in these non-living systems. And it has been shown experimentally with amyloids. There's a wealth of amyloid literature in the last 10 years. It's even been shown in non-organic molecules in molybdenum clusters. So yeah. I, I think that there is actual experimental evidence showing that it is not the case that you cannot have evolution before the genetic code or before the ribosome. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> we could have a good debate, but we can't do it here because, well, I know, I know the amyloid literature, and I, I have seen the paper, the first paper you mentioned. I don't remember the, who's the senior author? I think that, do you know who the senior author is? Yeah, Sandeep Amita. No, that's the I first one. Do you know who the, who's the last author? The last one is Shashi Thutapali. Okay, yeah, I, I have seen that, and uh, it doesn't do what you say it does. It, it requires actually you said this it requires three things it requires it requires heredity replication right now heredity is what i mean by accurate self-replication mm -hmm. i have published a paper which you could check out it's in biosystems this year just look gart biosystems showing that yes you can get uh you can get evolution if you have a degree of accuracy of the heredity above a threshold, but that threshold is far from zero. It's close to 50% in most cases. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have any accurate self-replication, I, I hate to use the word proof, but I did use math for this. And it's clear that you cannot get evolution started unless you have, as I said, not 100%, but a th beyond a threshold of that uh, era. And, and, and this is basically repeating what Eigen did many years ago, uh, Manfred Eigen, who found the era threshold uh, very important. So yes, if you have all those things that you mentioned, that's exactly what starts evolution. But if you don't, you don't. Now, in terms of the amyloid, we can't go into that because that is so technical. Uh, and would take so much time. And I know that literature and it's very interesting. All I can say to summarize my view is it's not relevant to the way life could have actually started on earth. And the same is true for the molybdenum. You're talking about, um, you're talking about uh, Lee um, Cronin's work on molybdenum, is that? Um, no, no, not Cronin. This was, um, it starts with an M. Here, I can pull it up while you finish your point. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, you know, there there are model systems that look very good, that that work quite well, that you know can make long polymers, can uh, replicate those polymers, can mutate, <laughs> you know, and you can you can do natural selection in PCR. I mean, there's all kinds of ways that you can do this, but again, without going into all the details of it. My view, having read that, is that, yeah, that's all very interesting, but it is not relevant to a natural origin of life in a, in a pond or an ocean. I um, mean, I don't know how much more I can say about it. 
without allow me to push back one time and then uh, we, then we, you can respond and we can i mean we, we, can we could have we could have a discussion about this in in another you know it, you said you have a okay. channel so i i'd yeah. be happy to come on with with the literature and talk about it i don't have it in awesome. front of me i'm just going based yeah. on what i remember having read the paper so i can't go into yeah. detail so that molybdenum paper was with miras at all and i was just using it to illustrate the the, the principle that you don't necessarily need to have a genetic code and ribosomes in order to have these um necessary prerequisites for darwinian evolution in place this was even in an inorganic system that was all i was saying i wasn't saying that it was actually relevant for yeah. abiogenesis i was just oh, saying yeah, in oh, principle that, yeah i agree you're right you, you 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 can you can do a lot of stuff that looks like evolution i mean you know, we have a lot, we have things that people call evolution that are outside of life. So what I should have said is biological evolution, which is very, very specific and has a very specific mechanism that you don't find in other examples of what people call evolution, including inorganic uh, chemistry. I, I would just ask one final question, because I do think that, for example, in amyloids, I said, I know you don't want to go into the, the weeds on that subject, but I mean, you do have elements of heredity, I do think it surpasses yeah. that threshold that you're talking about of replicate self replicating accuracy, it does accurately self replicate the actual t sequence of amino acids, um, via templated self replication, I do think it it surpasses that threshold that you laid out necessary for Darwinian evolution to take place. So and there have been uh, recent papers last year showing the interactions between nucleic acids and amyloids, which would be the very most rudimentary form of what you would need for ribosome uh, evolution right. to occur. So I want to ask, is this, you, you said that you don't find this to be relevant to the origin of life. I want to ask, is that an evidence-based um, claim or is that just your gut intuition? Uh, what it's based on, and again, I don't have the papers now and I don't remember everything that was in them, so I can't go into detail, but what, what it's based on is having read those papers and while reading them seeing, oh, aha, okay, they did this or they didn't do this or something and thinking, all right, well, that's nice. But, you know, you're making a very important point and, and it's actually a point that I think should be stressed. There's a huge amount of ingenuity and brilliant research that's going into this field. Why? Because it's the most difficult subject, I think, in science. Now, of course, I'm not a physicist, so I may be wrong. But certainly in biology, this is so challenging. It is so difficult that people are finding all kinds of innovative and interesting approaches to try to solve it. And there's some, there's some good stuff coming out, but the problem, the question is, is that good stuff like this amyloid work, how good is it to explain how life could have started? And that's the big question. I remember thinking, and again, uh, for the fourth or fifth time, I have to say, I can't tell you the details because I don't remember them, but I remember thinking as, as in many other uh, such models i mean you know nick lane has models i mean i don't know how many models you know of, but there are there are hundreds of models and none of them are terrible some of them are brilliant cronin has models you know uh some of them are really brilliant but what they they, they none of them get to the point of where everyone reads them and says ah we're there yes there's no consensus i will agree with that no i just consensus. can you clarify but before i go here can you just clarify for one last time like how it is that you say, okay, there are these multiple competing hypotheses. There is no consensus theory of abiogenesis, of course, right. but there's no consensus theory for quantum gravity either. And we don't say, well, since we don't have an explanation for quantum gravity, that points to a God. So why is it that in this instance, you're claiming that there, since there's no consensus theory of abiogenesis, then that points to a God. Can you just clarify that a bit? And then I, I'll, I'll, I, that's the end of my question. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I as a matter of faith, not science, I believe that God created the universe and everything in it, including life. Now, as a scientist, I, I as I mentioned to Ben, uh, I want to go further than that. I don't just say, okay, we don't have a consensus, so God did it. I believe that God did do it. He did create everything. And, and 
as you said, uh, quantum gravity. Okay, that I believe that came from God as well. I mean, this you know, quantum theory is 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 almost divine when you look at. It. I mean, it's certainly nothing we could think of, right? As humans, it's something incredible. So what I'm saying is that I think that there does exist an actual physical naturalistic theory that will explain. The origin of life, but we don't know what it is. And I'm going to, I said it, I said this to Ben also, I am going to say, tell a little bit later, some of the things that are hints pointing to what that theory must include. And among the other things that it will include is what I believe is evidence for a creator. So I'll, I'll, let, I'll leave it at that and pay attention because I'm going to get to that soon. Uh, very soon. <laughs> okay. Grayson, great call. Right. Thank you so great, much for great, your great. Uh, your very challenging questions. So, I uh, hope to see you back. I mean, uh, this we're we're going to be doing these all week. So, if you have uh, more questions on other topics that we're covering this week, we'd love to to have you back. So there you have it. I think I made a pretty compelling case using actual empirical evidence and peer reviewed published papers showing that so, that size initial point about that you cannot have. Darwinian evolution prior to things like the genetic code and the ribosomes is just not supported by the empirical evidence and we have evidence showing the exact opposite. I think I successfully pushed on that point and it got to the point where he said that eventually he says that a naturalistic explanation probably will be found for abiogenesis, but he says that this naturalistic explanation will somehow point to the existence of God. Now, he didn't say how it would point to the existence of God. He didn't really say anything about that. Um, and I think that that's really the crux of his argument is this kind of faith-based position that whatever answer naturalistic mechanism is eventually found for abiogenesis, he says that he thinks that that will indicate that there's a God, but he hasn't actually stipulated anything about why that would be the case. And it seems like that's it seems like I successfully pushed him to, to having to make that argument, which I don't think that you can support empirically at all. It just kind of seems like a faith-based claim about future scientific discoveries. I mean, none of the current scientific discoveries seem to point to the existence of God, but Psy will disagree. And in points two and three, he will make that case. So um, if you want to hear those points, check out the rest of the original video. But hopefully Psy will come on and we can discuss all three of these points and we can go into more details about what he's really saying then. So anyways, guys, hope you liked this uh, informal debate here, this little back and forth. Uh, I had a lot of fun and I hope that Psy does come, come on and we can talk a lot more in depth about all this stuff. But in the meantime, guys, stay curious and keep learning.